doesn't work in Europe. That's the problem. Zach, Tampa, Florida. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Scott Wilkinson, the home theater guy. Hi, Zach. Hello. Hello. Hey, Hello. Zach. How you doing, man? Hello. I'm, I'm doing good. All right. My question was based on home theater experience. I mean, like, I'm one who can, like, just learn quickly and wire things up. But my question is, like, is there technically a difference between quality for, like, coaxial audio, you know, like outputting from your set-top box to a receiver to, like, and optical audio? Is there any oh, difference? Some coax quality? is digital, actually. All coax is digital. Yeah. Co basically, coax... The, the output of a, a Blu-ray player or a set-top box that's coaxial digital audio and optical digital audio are identical in terms of the data that they the send. Bits, the bits going out of the, the same. The bits going out are the same. It's just how are they being sent? Are they being sent as electrical pulses or as optical pulses? Now, there is some question, uh, some argument, some debate, shall we say, over uh, which one is better. Uh, certainly, the the data is the same. Though. The data is the same, absolutely. So why would they bring merit for one over the other? Well, there, there's a, some people claim that there's an issue, a, a difference in what's called jitter, which is uh, delays in the packets. All all the data, the audio data that is being sent on both systems, is sent in discrete packets, and if those packets are not timed properly and reassembled properly, then you might have some problems. Huh. And uh, there are those that claim that uh, I forget, I think it's coax uh, they claim has more jitter potential, shall we say, than optical. Yeah, the I've one thing, sorry, I've noticed. Like usually, whenever I turn on or turn off a ceiling fan, the audio will like just fade out and fade back in real quickly on my system. Uh, are using a coax connector? Connector? Yeah, using a coaxial connector. Well, this I, may be this may be because of electrical interference, and this is what I was going to say that the real difference, the primary difference between uh, coax and optical, is that optical is completely and totally immune from any electrical interference, whereas coax, being an electrical signal, is has the potential to have some uh, problem with uh, electrical interference which is why I tend to use optical when I can, because you can <clears throat> run that cable directly across power lines and other uh, things, and you know your refrigerator can kick on, or your ceiling fan can kick on, or your AC can kick on. It won't do anything to that signal. Now, I will say also that coax and optical both can only carry standard Dolby Digital or DTS. It cannot carry the enhanced uh, new audio codecs of Dolby True HD and DTS HD. The only way, well, there's two ways to get those, the full resolution of those formats from your Blu-ray player, which is really all they're going to come from, to your system. Uh, one is by HDMI, and the other is by the analog, the multi-channel analog outputs on the Blu-ray player, if it has them. Uh, and the Blu-ray player then needs the op the ability to decode those formats and send them by analog to your AV receiver. So the Blu-ray player needs multi-channel analog outs. It needs the ability to decode DTS HD and Dolby True HD. And the receiver needs multi-channel analog inputs, which most modern receivers, at least at the moderate to higher levels, do. Uh, that that those are the t ways you can get these high-resolution audio formats uh, from Blu-ray. Uh, coax and uh, optical digital audio are only going to give you the standard lossy uh, uh, surround formats. But uh, to avoid electrical interference, I go with optical. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, that Zach. Answered. Excellent. Appreciate Great. the call. Thanks for calling in. Uh, let's, I think we have time for Ellie in Hawaii. Hi, 